Welcome to the Street Park Connection with Tommy. This video is on your Monday Night Raw results and Superstar Spoilers. Well, happy birthday uh, on July the 9th. Shelton Benjamin turned 41. Kevin Nash turned 57. Mark Merrill turned 56. PN News, a.k.a. Paul New, turned 50 on Saturday. And Damian666, a.k.a. Leonardo Carrera Gomez, turned 56 on Saturday. <clears throat> July the 10th, Bobo Burbers... Bobo Brazil, aka Houston Harris, was born on July 10th, 1924, died on January 20th, 1998, at the age of 73, after suffering multiple strokes. The late Johnny Grunge, uh, uh, aka Mike Durham, was born July 10th, 1966, died February 16th, 2006, at the age of 39, as a result of sleep apnea complications. Former WWE star Dwayne Gilbert turned 56 on on Monday, being, uh, today, and my hero, my dad, was born on this day, uh, like uh, July 10th of, uh, being Sunday, 1936. Since you don't know him, I'll tell you something about him. Without him, there would be no, uh, you would not hear the astronauts saying the words, the eagle has landed. It was my dad that found the actual transmission when the ship uh, shot around the moon. He placed the transmission back to Houston so everyone could hear those famous words. My dad served in the U.S. Army for 20 years before he retired and passed away in March 2003. So he's my hero. Thank you, Dad. I love you. Miss you. Uh, <clears throat> July the 11th being today. Superstar Tyson Kidd turned 36 years old. Former WCW Tag Team Champion Butch Reed turned 62. I actually met him in Augusta, Georgia, backstage. I was going to the bathroom on my way to the bathroom, which was on the other side of the arena, which is now uh, called the James Brown Arena. It used to be called Richmond County Coliseum, or whatever you call it. And wrestling legend Dick the Destroyer Bear turned 86. Trailer for the interrogation fe uh, uh, featuring uh, Lana and uh, Adam Copeland, aka okay, Edge, uh, hits DVD, Blu-ray, and HD streaming on September 20th. The film is from WWE Studios and Lionsgate. Again, go to that link. Last week, The Rock was launching a new pro wrestling promo contest for his YouTube channel. Well, Taz uh, took issue with the contest that he had a similar Contest going for the past year. This led to a brief exchange on Twitter. Also, <coughs> Rock sent a video message. I just link here for you. To Taz and his fans after the social media debacle. Rock says that there is no beat between the two. And he didn't know about Taz's radio show. But he does now due to the fan, fan response. Rock also noted that his idea... Goes back a year as well, but said both contests are all about having fun and are for the fans. Uh, Dolph Ziggler posted the following on Twitter, noting that he will be covering RNC for Fox Business show Kennedy Nation next week. So it's a possibility he may not be on SmackDown. Uh, at Hill Ziegler, very cool to be covering hashtag RNC for at Kennedy Nation at Fox Business next week in my hometown, hashtag Cleveland. More info to come. If I get any more info, I'll post it on the fact now video later this week. AJ Lee's first book called Crazy is My Superpower. How I Triumph from Breaking Bones, Breaking Hearts, and Breaking the Rules. Will be released on April the 4th, 2017. Book is described as following. Three time WWE Divas champion AJ Brooks. Crazy as my superpower. A literary memoir. Chronicle, uh, chronicling her unlikely rise from 100 pound nerd growing up in an extreme poverty and enduring years of abuse to international sex symbol and professional wrestling champion known as AJ Lee who fought against stereotypes, forced the men in her industry to view her with respect, and inspired a huge fan base of over 2 million Twitter followers with her fierce independent streak. 
in a significant deal on exclusive submission to Mary Chodborski at Crown Archetype, an imprint of Penguin Random House for Publication Spring 2017 by Lisa Lynchney and the Lynchney Agency. Foreign rights to Sandy Hodgman and Hodgman Literary. Two Bound Power Trip podcast recently interviewed former personality Brad Maddox. And here, are, here are some of the highlights. Maddox uh, comments on his WWE release. Mine was specifically for one incident that I had actually developed a good relationship with Vince and we just hadn't found an idea that we both agreed on and thought would stick so we're still working to do some stuff, but I wasn't planning on being released that week. On the incident that led to his release, it was because I called the Indianapolis crowd pricks. I guess uh, that Vince went the, uh, that this is a really bad word to him. I didn't think any, anything of it, and it's probably worse if you are from like New York City and in the 1950s, but I think, uh, didn't think anything of it, and he did. And I got talking to, got a talking to that night, and I got sent home. And they called me the next day and said they decided to make that make the decision. I don't know why the decision was so harsh. Everyone agreed that it was a terrible word to say, but it was a dark match and nobody was watching it, so it wasn't any sort of issue on social media platform. But it is it is what it is. No, I didn't talk to Vince because he wouldn't see me. It was a talent relation. That came and re I reported what was coming out of his mouth. I tried to talk to him that night, and he didn't want to see me, so I didn't get a chance to defend myself on his role as a general, as raw general manager. I really didn't really appreciate the role when I was in it. Looking back on it, I, I, I took for granted being on the same page as Vince and Hunter and Stephanie, Paul Heyman, and the big names in the industry. I don't really think I appreciated or took advantage of it. I was constantly fighting for, for getting back in the ring, which Vince didn't see for me, and maybe because he didn't know my background so well, and I was always kind of pushing to, to wrestle, and I wanted to do a deeper character. I had fun playing like the Michael Scott from The Office, and I don't know how much the writers really appreciated what I did, and I kind of felt unappreciated in my role that I did play, but I did not take advantage of what I had at the time. Any comments on the current WWE roster? I'm not up to date, but I do think for the most part they are going to going with the guys that they think are going to make money for their company, and that makes sense to me. Guys like John Cena are clear cut, the most talented guy on the roster, and he is just a total package. And such a hard worker. I think that they are pretty much doing a good job of putting up who needs to go up there. Maddox on John Cena is a locker room leader. I think he is the perfect guy to be at, at the top. He's nice to everyone and he'll take the time to talk to everyone and will give you his two cents. And it's like having Michael Jordan on your team because you can't outwork John Cena. So I don't think uh, there could be anyone better to lead the locker room. Than him, he's always ready and willing to, and able to stand up on behalf of the boys, or on behalf of the office. He plays it fair in both ways. In, in, in every time that I've seen, I think he does well in a spot, and it's well earned. On his rumored heat with Randy Orton, I don't think there is any heat with me and Randy. I gave out a story in my last interview because the guy just wanted some dirt. Randy is cool. He's not John Cena, but he will always talk to you. And I've had some good conversations with Randy. And he's never turned me down and asked his opinion or asked him a question. He's another guy that you can go to. And there is not anything wrong with his leadership either. Booker T had it is set to interview WWE Superstar Randy Orton, as I was just speaking about, for Sports Radio 610 in Houston, Texas. Orton will discuss his. Upcoming match with Roger Lester at SummerSlam next month. But according to this uh, episode 68 of Booker T's Heated Conversation podcast with Randy Orton, which is now online at this link for you, Orton's guest appearance starts about the 70 minute mark 
where he discusses his upcoming SummerSlam match with Brock Lesnar. Booker talked about Lesnar being a stiff worker, and Orton laughed on, on that subject. Orton said he and Lesnar came up together in WWE, and he's wanted to work with Lesnar for years. Former WWE superstar Cody Rhodes posted a jokey tweet about running for the Texas Senate in 2018. You can check his tweet out here. Uh, also on TheHill.com, later published an article about Rhodes posting the tweet at Cody Rhodes. Comments, vote Rhodes, Texas Senate, 2018. Not a drill? Well, kind of. The former Adam Rose brought back his Rosebuds persona and Rosebuds gimmick uh, for a UWA Elite Indie show this weekend, and you can find it at this link for you. And it was uploaded by Grimm's Toy Show. The Dudley Boys posted Twitter uh, posted a twi uh, Twitter following recent shootings by po uh, police officers. Show you a picture of that. Bubba Ray comments. It don't matter if you're black or white. We're all brothers and sisters. Hashtag His Life Matters at WWE at WWE Universe. As you can see in the picture, both Devon and Bubba have uh, posters on, on in the picture. Well, Paul Heyman and a guy that looked like MacGyver were at the UFC 200 uh, pay per view. And I'll show you a pic uh, all that for you. By the way, also uh, speaking of MacGyver. Which uh, show, uh, starts on CBS on September 23rd. And no, it's not got the uh, Richard Dean Anderson playing the part. It has uh, Lucas Till and George Eads. And uh, follow uh, MacGyver CBS on Twitter. That's MacGyver CBS. I'll just post a link for you. And it starts at 7 p.m. Central Time on Fridays. Joey Ryan took to Twitter today to claim that he sold more, more merchandise than TNA as a whole during Pro Wrestling Tees 4th of July sale. At Joey Ryan Online, three years ago this week, TNA released me from my contract. And this week, I outsold their entire brand during PWT's 4th of July sale. TMZ uh, Sports posted the following video of Matt Hardy cutting a promo. On CM Punk's UFC debut and relating it back to his match with Jeff Hardy from last week on TNA Impact Wrestling. Hardy said that both Punk and Jeff will be deleted in their respective fights. And he was a delete, 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 delete. Uh, very similar to a Punk named Scooby Doo episode. Uh, still speculation at this point. But a new cancellation in Moose's Ring of Honor indie schedule suggests that he may be signed with TNA. Nova Pro Wrestling has announced that their Ring of Honor alumni will no longer be appearing at their August 12th One Crazy Summer show due to a contractual obligation. TNA is set to do a TV tapings from August 11th through the 14th. At Moose Nation on Twitter, uh, at Moose Nation 69 on Twitter, thank you at Ring of Honor for the last two years. And all the memories. See you down the road. Hashtag moose, 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 moose. Ring of Honor has announced that they will return to the UK for house shows on November 18th, 19th, and 20th. There are, these are the promotion's first UK shows in a decade. More information, as I find, very soon. The wife of TNA superstar James Storm, Dan, uh, Danny Cox, or Danny Cox, uh, has revealed in a video at this link, Instagram, the Ms. Storm, that she and Storm are expecting their second child together. You can check out their announcement on Instagram. Congratulations to the two, as she has had uh, some complications. ProWrestlingSheet.com is reporting that Danny's pregnancy was quite difficult, as she was reported, reportedly getting fertility shot treatments and was informed by doctors that it would be difficult for her. Alexi Rose Productions released a workout video for WWE Developmental star Manny Rose. And you can check out the video on this link here. Randy Orton will return to the ring August 21st. 
WWE SummerSlam pay-per-view and will be against Brock Lesnar. Also scheduled at Battleground pay-per-view on July, uh, July 24th. Orton has been announced for the highlight reel with Chris Jericho. So, here's your updated card. Triple Threat for the World Heavyweight title. Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns versus Dean Ambrose. Intercontinental title match. Darren Young with Bob Backlund. Versus The Miz with Maurice. John Cena, Enzo Amore, and Big Cass versus AJ Styles, Luke Gallows, and Carl Anderson. Also known as The Club. Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens. Becky Lynch versus Natalya. Highlight reel with Chris Jericho and Randy Orton. So far, that's all it's scheduled. Sasha Banks made it to Detroit. Uh, from uh, to appear at Raw, thanks to Good Samaritan. And I'll show you in a picture as uh, she had a flat tire on her way there. And she tweeted uh, to show the picture at Sasha Banks WWE. Thank you to these Good Samaritans for helping me with my flat tire. See you at Raw, uh, hashtag Raw Detroit tomorrow. As she had the flat tire last night. WWE take the following matches in Detroit for this week's Superstars episode. Becky Lynch versus Summer Rae. Sami Zayn versus Curtis Axel. No dark match was advertised. And results. Becky Lynch defeated Summer Rae. Becky wins by submission with a disarmor. Big reaction for Becky. Natalya was on commentary for the match. Sami Zayn defeated Curtis Axel. Zayn wins by pinfall. Said to be a good match. Went around 10 minutes. Crowd popped for... Uh, big for Zane. Decent booze for Axel, too. Pre-show video from Facebook promo with Seth Rollins. Got this link. Raw will open up with a standard in intro video. And we're live from Detroit as the power goes off. I missed the first part of uh, uh, this. It was nothing but a battle royal. Michael Cole welcomes us as we're joined in by Byron Saxon and JBL. Intercontinental Towel. Intercontinental title battle royal. Not for the title, just the number one contender. Bubba Ray Dudley, Devon Dudley, Connor, Victor, Apollo Crews, Simon Gotch, Aiden English, Goldust, Archers, Baron Corbin, Dolph Ziggler, Jimmy Uso, Jay Uso, Alberto Del Rio, Darren Young, Jack Swagger, Bo Dallas, Curtis Axel. We go to the ring. And it's filled with superstars. Apollo Crews makes his way out. Interco Intercontinental champion the Miz is at ringside with Maurice. For commentary, he stands on the announce table and runs his mouth, revealing that the winner will face him at Battleground. He wishes everyone good luck, but says it doesn't matter who wins. Bell rings and everyone goes at it. Aiden English was out first. We see Bob Backlund at ringside. Truth will elim eliminate Connor. Devon eliminated Axel. Ziggler works on Del Rio. Truth and Corbin go at it. Goldust works on Young. Corbin and eliminated Truth. Corbin and eliminated Victor. Jey Uso tries to eliminate Jimmy. But he hung on. They both eliminated Devon. We go to commercial. Back from the break. And Bubba drops one of the Usos while Miz and Maurice kiss on commentary. Bubba goes to work on Swagger. During the break, Ziggler eliminated Gotch. Bubba eliminated Jay. So both Usos are gone. Goldust and Del Rio are at, are at it now. Del Rio eliminated Goldust. Uh, Cruz eliminated Bo Dallas. Swagger with a Patriot lock on Uso. Well, he wasn't eliminated yet. Young almost eliminated Ziggler. Corbin eliminated Uso and Swagger at the same time. Uh, Bubba worked on Young as Backlund looked on from ringside. Cruz with a crossbody on Del Rio. Young worked Bubba into a boot from Corbin. Young eliminated Bubba. Corbin slammed Young. Del Rio with an insecurity on Corbin. Ziggler ducked a kick and hits a famous throw on Del Rio. Ziggler tossed Del Rio, but he hung on. Del Rio would have the world gut buster on, uh, to Ziggler. Ziggler sends Del Rio to the floor, but he went through the second rope, and he is still in the match. Corbin and Ziggler go at it. Del Rio comes back in and stops Cruz in the corner. Cruz eliminates Del Rio with an assist from Corbin. It's down to Cruz, Corbin, Young, and Ziggler. Corbin and Ziggler end up on the apron. Ziggler goes back in and works Corbin over, but Corbin grabs him and tosses him out over the top rope to the floor. So he's eliminated. Cruz goes after Corbin now. Corbin elim eliminates Cruz, but they both hit the floor for a double elimination, and Darren Young wins and is now your number one contender. After the match, Bob Backlund comes in to celebrate with Young, and some fans chant his name. Still to come segment, Vince McMahon appears as he's on his way. According to Michael Cole, also a special look at Brock Lesnar's UFC return. 
Coleslaw says the New Day and the White family battled this past weekend, and we will see footage later later in the evening. About the commercial. Hmm. I heard a rumor that uh, WWE was supposed to be copying TNA. Well, let's see what happens in the next few minutes. We come back to Stephanie McMahon and Stephanie McMahon talking backstage. They wonder why their dad is coming to Raw tonight. Seth Rollins walks in and says, maybe Vince is coming to talk to him. Rollins re uh, believes that they should put, uh, put him out in front tonight. And Stephanie agrees. Shane brings up a possible Ambrose Asylum segment. And Stephanie knocks Dean Ambrose. Rollins proposes the first ever Rollins Report segment and promises it would be great. Shane says if Stephanie's call, it's Stephanie's call and she's all in. Rollins promises they won't be disappointed and walks off. Shane says this is all on her and says she likes it. That way, Shane walks off. And now to show us, still some rock lessons win over Mark Hunt at USC 200 on Saturday night. They hype Lesnar versus Orton at SummerSlam for next month. Orton is announced for a highlight reel with Chris Jericho at Battleground. So his official return will be at Battleground. Uh, Zack Ryder is shown backstage. He walks up on the U.S. champion Rusev and challenges him, uh, but is attacked from behind by Sheamus. Sheamus tells him as we go to commercial, and the match is up next. Back from the break, Sheamus is making his entrance. Zack Ryder was out next, and we see the Spanish announce table. Uh, Spanish is an announcer that ringside. Ryder gets on in some offense, but Sheamus ends up hitting him with a road kick to get, get, get a fair, quick win. After the match, Rusev uh, marks his way to the ring, attacks Ryder. Ryder tries to fight back, but Rusev puts him in accolade and screams about accepting the challenge. Lana and Rusev stand over Ryder as, as his music hits as they go to commercial. So the gum segment, before they go to commercial, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson versus Enzo and Big Cass. Back to commercial. Breezango versus Loser Dragon. They go to the ring and out comes Tyler Breeze and Fandango. Sakara and Calissa were out next. Back and forth between Fandango and, and Sankara to start. Breeze gets a tag, but Kara keeps control. Fandango comes back in and they finally take control after some double teaming. Fandango would shoot count Bree Breezango with a quick tag as they keep Sankara grounded. Calissa gets a tag and slips, and slips doing a springboard, allowing Breeze to take control. Calissa comes back and drops Breeze with a kick. Calissa plants Breeze face first and takes out Fandango when he runs in. Sankara leaps out to the floor and takes out Fandango. Breeze rolls Calissa up for a two. The end comes with Breeze. Kicks Calissa in the corner and slams, his face. slams him from the second rope for the pinfall. Winner match, Breeze Ango. Another Stella Come segment. The first episode of the Rollins Report. Back to the commercial. Back from the break, out comes Seth Rollins for his first episode of the Rollins Report. There are no special props, screens, or ring aprons, just Rollins and a mic. Of course, this was a, this, a, it brought up a video of what was recorded earlier. Uh, Rollins hopes uh, we're ready and says that uh, he has a big scoop tonight. He says the hottest new investigative reporter telling Bill O'Reilly and Anderson Cooper to take a seat, telling old friend John Stewart to stay retired. Rollins says he has an interview with Reigns where he asks the hard-hitting questions. Rollins says it's about to blow Detroit's mind and keeps asking if they're ready. Uh, Rollins sends us to the first actual Rollins Report episode with On the Big Screen. Rollins is in a sit-down interview telling or setting and he uses footage from Reigns' interview with Michael Cole to make him look bad. Like I said, recorded earlier. Back in the arena, WWE Champion Dean Ambrose interrupts to a pop. They trade promos in the ring, and Rollins knocks Ambrose the title away. Rollins says that battleground, it will be just about the two of us, about who is the best member of the Shield. Rollins says he will prove the world to the world that he he's known the entire time he was better than Ambrose before the Shield, during the Shield, then and now. Rollins says Ambrose's fairy tale title reign will come crashing down the battleground. Rollins says he will take back the title that Ambrose stole. Uh, Ambrose uh, says he does like to come out and have fun because he's on top of the industry. Ambrose says he's proved a long time ago that he's not a joke. Ambrose says that he's the backbone of the industry and now the whole world knows it. He raised the title in, in Rollins' face. Ambrose goes on and says the title will have to be taken from his cold dead hands, Ambrose says that's not 
happening at Battleground or ever. He says Rollins is embarrasses and disgusts him. Ambrose will give Rollins a one on one match anytime, any place. He drops the mic and squares up. Rollins teases the match for tonight, but says he will do it on his time next week. So to come segment again, footy the new day and Wyatt family going to war. Back for the break. Out comes Sami Zayn for commentary. Kevin Owens music hits. And but he doesn't come out for his match. We go backstage and Owens is arguing with the refer with the referees, calling Sammy on on commentary as an unsafe working environment. He refuses to go out until Sammy is removed from commentary. Stephanie walks up and makes it happen. Referees go out and they escort Sammy to the back. Owen comes out and they brawl on the ramp. Owen hits the ring and yells for Sammy to come back. We see a limo pull up outside and Vince McMahon steps out. Renee Young stops him for comments on why he's here. Vince says he's here for the fresh Detroit air and to make and to name the new COO of SmackDown Live. Vince says it's the new era and may be. We need something bigger. So he's here to announce the new commissioner of SmackDown. Vince says he's, he may change his mind again, but he will never, he will let everyone know when he marches to the ring. Live here in Detroit. Back to commercial. Kevin Owens versus Cesaro is up next. Back from the break. And Owens is in, in, still in the ring. Cesaro is out next to a pop. Owens stalls some to start the match. Cesaro hits a gut red superplex early on. Cesaro keeps Owens grounded with a headlock, but it's reversed. They run the ropes and Cesaro hits a hurricanrana and goes for Cesaro's swing, but Owens retreats for a breather. Cesaro lifts up off the apron, takes Owens out on the floor. Cesaro goes for a running uppercut on the floor, but Owens sidesteps and he hits the barrier. Owens knocks Cesaro over the barrier with a kick and breaks the count. Owens brings it back to the ring and hits the senton for a two count. Cesaro, Cesaro ends up hitting the uppercut. Owens misses the kick and eats another uppercut. Cesaro gets knocked from the apron to the barrier. It lands hard. Owen stands tall as we go to commercial. Back from the break, Owens has Cesaro in a headlock. Cesaro fights out, but Owen drops a neck breaker over his knee for a two count. Owens hits a corner close side, but misses the cannonball. Cesaro comes back with uppercuts in the corner. Cesaro unloads with uppercuts as Rep rewards him. Owens goes down with a big uppercut for a two count. Owens up. Ends up hitting the poke to the eye while the referee isn't looking, but it backfires on him as Cesaro avoids the pop up power bomb. Cesaro with a springboard uppercut for a close two count. Owens goes back to the floor. Cesaro puts on JBS cowboy hat and runs around the ring to deliver an uppercut. Cesaro brings it back in and goes up top for a crossbody, but Owens kicks out at two. The swing is blocked again. Cesaro blocks a tornado DT and nails a drop kick while Owens is up top. Cesaro gets crotched, leading Owens hitting the TKO for the win. After the match, Owens goes to ringside and takes By Byron's headset. He rants until Sami Zayn attacks him over the barrier. Sami beats on Owens at ringside and slams him into the announce table. Sami rolls Owens in the ring, but the referee stops him from following. Fan chant for Sami as he, he and Owens have words. Owens turns around to Cesaro, who drops him and puts him in the Cesaro swing. And Sami's music hits, and Owens falls out to the floor. We're going to look back at Enzo Amore and Big Cass making the save for John Cena last week. And we see the club walking backstage as Renee approaches for comments. Carl Anderson says, Enzo and Cass are in trouble tonight. AJ Styles says, Are we listening? <laughs> he didn't say that. Uh, he said that Cena doesn't care about Enzo and Cass. AJ points out that how Cena isn't here tonight. And he is at the SP Awards rehearsals in LA. But apparently... He doesn't do the pre-show or watch the pre-show or anything because uh, on Twitter and other social media, there were some pictures of Cena uh, with a fan, as is a uh, usual stitch uh, doing the which uh, which kids. AJ uh, AJ says that they're going to take out Enzo and Cat tonight. Then they should jump. On a fight to L.A. to crash the Espies. Then, hashtag beat up John Cena. The club walks off laughing as we get a commercial. Next up, we got Heath Slater versus Titus O'Neil. Out to the ring comes Heath Slater with fellow social outcasts. Bo Dallas Curtis Axel. We get a sidebar video from earlier with the outcast knocking Titus O'Neil for losing on the 4th of July on Father's Day. Titus makes his way out to the ring next. 
Bell rings the Slater ducks a move, nailing a chop. He shows off and dances around it as Titus is watching. Slater turns around and Titus tossing him in the corner. Titus with a big chop. As a shows the outcast and doing a victory lap. For distraction, Titus then tosses Slater across the ring. Shoulder block. And then the uh, toss across the ring. Slater finally turns it around but wastes time playing to the outcast as they're doing victory lap. Titus catches a boot, but Slater drops him with a DDT for a close two count. Titus pow overpowers and sends Slater flying again. Titus tosses him again and hits the shoulder block. Titus with a, nut, uh, with a big clothesline this time. Slater tries to make a comeback, but Titus catches him catches uh, him on a crossbody. And then uh, catches one of the three back, uh, back breakers and then tossing Slater to the side. Titus gets fired up. Hoo -ya, hoo -ya, hoo -ya. Hits the flash in the corner, then nails the clutch to Titus for the win. Well, after the match, Titus stands tall and dances as his music hits. Renee Young backstage with Sasha Banks. She talks about tonight's uh, match with Dana Brooke and says uh, she doesn't get mad, she gets real. Still the come segment, what happened with the New Day visit to the Wyatt family over the weekend at the compound. Batch commercial. Back from the break, Coles Hall leads us to the back. A look back at last week, where tag, tag team champions New Day addressed the invitation to the Wyatt family at Compound. We go to the video of the Wyatt family trying to run over the New Day in a field filled with lights. The Wyatt stepped out of the vehicle, and Braun Strowman, Bray Wyatt, and Eric Rowan started brawling with Kofi Kingston, Biggie, and Xavier Woods in, in this field. We cut the Woods up against a tree. Wyatt swings and acts and misses. Hitting the tree instead. Wyatt beats Woods down and carries him away. We see Big E slamming Rowan in the dirt. Strowman throw, throws a tire at Kofi. Someone gets thrown into a windshield. Woods' body is dropped in front of Big E and Kofi. We see the Wyatt standing tall and cut back to the other scenes of the two teams brawling. The segment ends with, the, with Wyatt on his knees laughing in front of the New Day. He's joined by the others and we see fireflies or people wearing Wyatt family masks and holding lanterns. Failing to fill up, Wyatt yells to follow the buzzards as we go back to the announcers. JBL says he's never seen anything like that, like what we just saw. Well, this was uh, very similar to last week's uh, Hardy versus Hardy match as they were doing drones as their fireflies, quote, uh, with a thing. But they didn't... Uh, do anything else similar to TNA, just the car, car lights and what have you. And there was nobody in the field, even though last week saw TNA, Matt Hardy doing his uh, new gimmick, whatever. Kind of sucks to me. Uh, I was driving as a driving a lawnmower, screwing around with his yard. It was already decorated a certain way. I was just driving straight up. All right, we go to Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson versus Enzo and Big Cass. This is your main event, main event for Raw. We go to ring out comes the club. Enzo and Big Cass were out next to a big pop. They cut promos on the on the ring, on the way to the ring. Very similar to all what they do all the time. Cass says everyone on the roster wants to see the spot, including them, but that has to be earned. Cass goes on and says they have stepped up and joined the fight instead of sitting back and waiting. AJ Styles calls that a real cute story and reminds them. The scene is not here tonight because he doesn't care about Enzo and Cass. AJ gives them the chance to walk away, but Enzo says the only place they're walking to, walking to is in the, in the ring. Cass leads the soft gimmick, and they head to the ring as we go to commercial. Back for the break, Enzo is going at it with Anderson. They trade holes as AJ cheers the club on from ringside. Enzo dodges a move in the corner, rolls Anderson up for a two count. Enzo with a backside for a two count. Enzo with another takedown to keep Anderson grounded. Styles gets a dueling chance from the crowd. Anderson turns things around. Takes Enzo down with a, another headlock. Cass finally gets a tag and works Anderson over. Enzo tags back in and they double team Anderson. Enzo doesn't see Gallows get a tag. Gallows comes in with a big boot and then launches Enzo into the corner. Enzo falls to the floor. And AJ talks trash as we go to commercial. Back from the break. Gallows is in control of Enzo. Gallows uh, gets a two count. 
Enzo reaches for a tag, but Gallows slams him back into the corner. Enzo fights Gallows off and decks Anderson. Enzo brings Gallows down with a DDT. Cass gets a hot tag and unloads on both opponents. Anderson takes the Empire elbow and big fall away slam out of the corner. Cass with a big splash in the corner and then a big boot on Anderson. Enzo then tags in for the rocket launcher. Styles dumps Cass to the floor. Gallows breaks up Enzo's pin. AJ tosses Cass over the barrier for disqualification as the referee actually sees it. Winners by disqualification, Enzo and Big Cass. After Bell Styles comes into the ring and the club surrounds Enzo momentarily. And then John Cena's music hits to a big pop and out he comes. Cena rushes the ring, as does Cass from the, from the crowd. The club brawls with Cena. Enzo and Big Cass but get tossed to the floor. Both teams face off and talk trash as the crowd pops. Cena music hits as the club looks on from ringside as they exit. And now it's a tight, the Cruiserweight Classic. So to come, Vic McMahon is here. Also, Sasha Banks versus Dana Brooke. Magic commercial. Well, I forgot about that match. Dana Brooke versus uh, Sasha Banks was up next. Back from the break. Dana Brooke is out with Women's Champion Charlotte. Dressed in street clothes. Sasha was out next to a pop. Sasha ducks to lock up and drops Dana to start. Sasha talks trash as Dana retreats to the floor for a breather. Fans are booing. They come back in and Dana ends up take, taking control. Talking trash while working Sasha over. Sasha makes a comeback, but Dana beats her down. As Charlotte looks on from ringside, Dana sends Sasha out to the floor on her back. Charlotte comes over and taunts Sasha with the title as we go to commercial. Back from the break, Dana is in control of Sasha in the middle of the ring. Lots more back and forth until Sasha drops Dana into the bank statement right in front of Charlotte. Dana goes for the bottom rope, but Sasha pulls back her back into the center of the ring, and Dana taps. Winner of the match, Sasha Banks. After the match, Charlotte. Doesn't look happy as good to replace. Sasha celebrated as Charlotte takes the mic. She congratulates congratulate Sasha and knocks her hair. Uh, Charlotte says Sasha isn't worthy of a title shot after just winning once. Charlotte says anyone can get lucky once, but that doesn't mean they're deserving. Charlotte proposes Sasha versus Dana on SmackDown to see if Sasha is deserving. They have more back and forth until Sasha's music hits and she stands all in the ring. Then we see Vince McMahon walking backstage. Back to commercial. Back for the break. Then we see Shane McMahon to a pop. Stephanie McMahon is out next to join him in the ring. Vince McMahon makes his way out. He's a bit disappointed with how Stephanie and Shane have been. He asks who the hell Stephanie has been lately. Uh, Vince says he's uh, she's been acting too sweet lately. And she disagrees. Vince says Shane doesn't even deserve to be on the show after losing at WrestleMania 32. Uh, Shane says he wants competition. As I didn't see any actual, uh, why should I let you be general manager or COO of SmackDown? All she did was complain about, about, uh, Shane. Sammy then tried to turn things around on Shane, makes herself look good, talking about how some of her accomplishments she says, uh, he is, a, he is a wolf in sheep's clothing and constantly stabs Vince in the back. Vince says Stephanie made some good points and tells Shane to co convince him. Shane talks about representing change and talks about how he would make SmackDown better. Shane says he is the only person on the planet that tells Vince exactly what's on his mind in a respectful way, but without kissing his ass. And Vince has, uh, Vince has, has to respect that deep down. Shane says that Vince has a, Chance to make history would change, and if he still has grapefruits, as a crowd, ooh, we will pick Shane to run SmackDown. Of course, the crowd's right away behind him, as he does the fans. Vote for Stephanie, boo, vote for Shane, yay, boo, yay. Vince says he doesn't care what the fans think, that's not how to run us business. He calls for a drum roll as he's bored, and it's time to announce the commissioner saying it has been. It has to be one of them. He thinks about it. And announces Shane as the main man to run SmackDown when it goes to live on USA Network. He then announces that Shane is relieved of his Raw duties. And announces that Stephanie is the new Raw commissioner. Vince wants them to go hard when competing with each other. The point of breaking the law is as long as they don't get caught. He tells them to make general manager picks next week on Raw. Or he will pick the GMs for them. Vince says... Let the games begin, and then he he exits. Stephanie starts re re ridiculing 
Shane threatens, threatens SmackDown and says she will make him regret being born. Shane says when it's all said and done, she will be looking up to him like she always has. Shane says game on. And Stephanie says there's only one game. She's married to him, slaps him. Before leaving the ring, she stumbles coming off the steel steps and everyone points it out. Well, she limps for a few seconds. And Shane is even laughing. Well, I'll point at him. Uh, Shane thanks Detroit one more time as Raw goes off the air. And one reason why I'm wearing this Drew Brees shirt, uh, he was in the All-Star Game and actually played on the Celebrity All-Star Game. And I think he played on the, the winning team. I think the American League won. He actually hit a home run, so he's not just a touchdown thrower. He's a home run hitter. And that concludes my uh, Raw and Superstars video for this week. Thanks again. Peace out. See you in my video. If you don't know, just comment, brothers and sisters.